good day to each and every last one of you. Welcome to New Hope Baptist Church, where we are building faith and sharing love. Hey, during our Thursday evenings, hey, we're taking a journey back. We're calling it Throwback Thursdays, where we'll look at some of the classic messages that have been preached at the New Hope Church and some messages that have been shared in different pulpits across the country. Listen, some words have extra life and extra years and miles on them. And we trust that it's going to bless you. If you're watching and you need to know Jesus or you're looking to connect with this community, hey, you don't have to wait to be in person. You don't have to be in this city or this region. You can connect with us. Be a virtual member. You can join by texting NHBC Join. Text NHBC Join to 501 737 4040. Listen, let's go into the sanctuary and take a journey back. Deuteronomy chapter 1. And I want to start at verse 6. I want to break in on the middle of the paragraph on today. And I pray that this word will be helpful to you. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6. To all of our first-time friends today, thank you for choosing Brown as your place of worship on today. Deuteronomy 1, verse 6 says this. The Lord our God said to us in Horeb, You stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in Arabia, in the hill country and in the lowland and in the Gib and by the sea coast, the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I've set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their offspring after them. Verse 6, the Lord our God said to us in Horeb, you stayed at this mountain long enough. I want to talk about enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough, church, is that potent phrase that literally means what has been going on needs to stop. It means enough with the status quo and cease with unproductive living and unproductive talk. It, it means that one has become exacerbated and tired with life as usual. Maybe you've heard that phrase from a matriarch when she's grown tired of two siblings squabbling and the matriarch says, now enough is enough. Maybe you've heard those words from some educator when two students have continuously been disrupting the educational process and the teacher says, I've had enough, enough is enough. Maybe those were the sentiments of our soul sister, Fannie Lou Hamer, when she said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. That is what the socially astute journalist says when they are supposed to maintain a neutral position, but when there is a, a obvious and heinous act of injustice, even the journalist has to step back and say, enough is enough. Church, may I park there parenthetically for a moment and suggest to you, maybe that's what we ought to find ourselves saying to ourselves. When we find ourselves that we are the culprit behind the chaos in our own lives. Maybe we ought to say that to ourselves when we find ourselves parked in purposeless and find ourselves in mess and mediocrity. And those are the times when we must become the foremen and the project managers of our own lives and say enough is enough. Let, let, let me stop here for a minute. I know it's easy 
for us to always to try to put the blame on some external force. It's always easy for us to say it's the enemy or our adversary across town, but somebody can testify that sometimes we are our own biggest problem. I believe I pushed this a little further. Somebody can say it ain't always the devil. It's not always the boss. It's not always some jealous person. Sometimes my biggest enemy is me and I find myself in a civil war. Oftentimes when I should do good, evil is always present. Oh, let me push it further today. If I would unzip myself and you knew everything about me beyond the shirt, suit, and tie, and where I've been to school and the church that I passed, if you knew everything about me, you wouldn't want to hear me preach. But before you look at me in that tone of voice, if you would unzip yourself and I knew everything about you, I wouldn't want to preach to you. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And sometimes we have to learn how to push ourselves forward. But church, this is the temptation Oftentimes, many of us find ourselves inflicted with a form of spiritual laryngitis where we can't speak a word over our own existence. Who am I talking to? Maybe it's a muzzle on your mouth. And you find yourself in neutral. You could go forward or you could go backwards. May I suggest to you, church, this morning, neutral is a dangerous place to be in. Neutral is too expensive. Maybe God has given you great hopes and great dreams, but you find yourself parked in neutral. And this is the temptation. It's too easy to go backward in neutral. And God wants you to go forward. That's what we have going on here in this text. Here God speaks through Moses to this new generation of Israelites. Listen, this is the second generation of Israelites. Their parents have been freed. They no longer have the chains of oppression on their wrists and on their arms. But listen, they've been emancipated from slavery physically. But they still have the chains on their mind. May I park there for a moment? It's one thing to be free physically. But it's something else to be free emotionally and spiritually. And some of us, God has set free, but we still have the chains of oppression on our hearts and our minds. And here God speaks through Moses and he tells these people, enough is enough. It's interesting that the book of Deuteronomy is a book of transition. God is trying to transition this new group of people to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. He's trying to transition a new generation. A new generation, listen, everybody wouldn't make it to the promised land. Many of them peeked over and smelled the roses of the promised land. But only Moses, Joshua, and Caleb would make it in. That's a rough place to be in, church. To be so close, but yet so far away to peek over and smell the roses of the promised land, but you don't make it in. God is trying to make sure that this new generation makes it in. But he's also trying to give them a new possession. New possession. These were a pitiless people. They didn't have much, and now God is trying to take them. You hear this phrase all through the Old Testament, a land that's flowing with milk and honey. That, that, that's simply a phrase that's saying God is trying to give them abundance. He's trying to give them new experiences. New experience. They had been a nomadic people living here and there. They didn't have homes, but now God is trying to take them from a nomadic people to give them a settled habitation. And finally, he's trying to transition them to a new experience with God. 
We don't see anywhere in the book of Deuteronomy until Deuteronomy 4 and verse 37 where it says that God loves his people. But God is trying to emphatically share with them that I love you and because I love you, I want you to make it to your preferred and promised place. And that's God's word for somebody. Don't settle for the wilderness when God has more for you. And, and that ought to be a word for somebody. You ought to be tired of coming to church on Sunday and going back to life as normal. You ought to be tired of going to a dead end job and you don't want any more for your life. You have to come to the point in your life and say enough is enough. This is the take home truth and I'll soon be in my seat. God expects us to stop being satisfied with survival when abundance is available. Who am I talking to today? Deliver me from church people who say on Sunday, God can do anything but fail. But when you leave, you start second guessing God. I came to tell somebody, God has come that you may have life more abundantly on your job, in your family, in your faith. God doesn't want you just to survive, but God wants you to thrive. Just look in somebody's direction and say, neighbor, God has more for me. This is the deed to do. Cease counterproductive thinking and behavior and move with divine determination. So, so there are three quick moves we see in this text, and I pray that this encourages you. The first thing is this. You have to measure your progress. Look, look at the text. The Lord shows up. And he speaks through Pastor Reverend Moses and he tells these people, listen, you stayed at this mountain long enough. These people are in the mountainous district of Arabia. He's speaking to this second generation. He says, I have more for you. Listen, this journey to their promised land was only a few days journey. It was a 150 mile journey. It's only supposed to take a few days if they're going by feet, a few days if they're going by horse or camel. But listen, now they found themselves in the wilderness for 40 years. That's a long time, church. It's only supposed to take a few days, and now it's taken an extended amount of time. And this is the word. It is no question that God was on their side. It's no question that God was on their side because God had emancipated them with power and glory. God was on their side because even when they got hungry in the wilderness, God became a sanctified maitre d and gave them manna from on high. God had to be on their side because they left with only one set of clothes on when they left Egypt. And listen, God let fashion and stand still for 40 years, God had to be on their side. But the question is, what took them so long? What took them so long on a 150 mile journey? Maybe that's a question you ought to ask yourself. There's no doubt that God has been good to you. There's no doubt God is, keeps waking you up in the morning. God has let you finish school. God has blessed you beyond your wildest dreams. I, I know it's a bad economy somewhat right now, but you still living better than you ever been living before. God has been on your side. But the question is, why are you still where you are right now? And this was the problem with the children of Israel. They didn't have a strength problem. They didn't have a sophistication issue. They had a spiritual issue and this is all I came to tell you you don't have a strength problem you look good you got hair like raven feathers you got teeth like a flock of sheep you in shape you got bulging biceps you have a shape like a coca-cola bottle shape but this is the word you are still at the same place and don't settle to look good on the outside but you're spiritually anorexic I believe I say that again don't settle 
settle to look good on the outside, but you're spiritually anorexic. And this has to be your motto. I'm not going without God. I believe I say that again. I can't make it this year without God. My marriage can't stay together without God. I can't raise these crazy children without God. We can't go into another election cycle without God. Zechariah said, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. I'm almost done, church. We take a lot of time with our health. We take a lot of time nurturing our finances. Well, this is the question. Are you taking the same level intentionality about your soul? The Bible teaches us today what profits a man to gain the whole wide world and to lose his soul. L -l Listen, you can have a pretty car, but your soul is thumbing awry. You, you, you can have the biggest house, but your soul is still outdoors. You, 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 you can wear Gucci and Louis Vuitton, but your soul is still naked. You can wear diamonds and still be in need of deliverance. You can wear gold and still have gloom over your head. Listen, except the Lord builds the house. Those that build it labor in vain. And somebody can testify. You you want everything that God has for you, but somebody can say, I've had a pocket full of money and still been empty, but I've been broke and still been full because God has been on the inside. Touch somebody and say, neighbor. I'm full, not based on what I drive, not based on where I live, not based on the letters behind my name, but I'm full because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I feel like revival today. But can I push it further? Not only do you have to measure your progress, but you have to consider your position. Look at it there in Horeb, a dry, mountainous district. They're in the wilderness where the, where the weeds are all grown up. The wilderness, trackless trails, scorpions and serpents. The wilderness where the forge robbers to lay behind the cliffs of rocks and ambush them unexpectedly. The wilderness. But what is their address? I tell you, 222. Wilderness Drive in Wilderness City Wilderness. That there are no GPS systems in the wilderness. But this is the word God had taken care of them in the wilderness. God showed up in power and glory in the wilderness. God gave the children of Israel the Ten Commandments in the wilderness. He established tabernacle worship in the wilderness. He established the Levitical tribe in the wilderness. And I know ought to have at least a hundred people here at this 11 o'clock service that can lift up your hands and say, I'm glad that I serve a God that can take care of me in the wilderness. Yeah, You've been in the wilderness. Your back has been up against the wall. You've had depression and God brought you out. You've been broke and God gave you a little bit to survive. I serve a God that can take care of you in the wilderness. I know you're driving what you're driving today, but you ain't always been driving at it. I know you in church today, but there have been times on Sunday morning you still had last night's refreshments on you, and you didn't have your mind on God, but God took care of you in the wilderness. But there's a problem here. There's tension here. God had taken care of them in the wilderness. But consider the audacity of God. 
God says, but you stayed here long enough. God has a lot of nerve, y'all. As soon as we get comfortable, as soon as we settle in, as soon as we become adjusted to where we are, God has enough nerve to say, now it's time for you to do something else. Wait a minute. God, I like where I am. God, you showed up. But he says, I know I've taken care of you there, but that's not the place where I intended you to live. Church, that's the temptation for some of us. Just because God has taken care of us at a particular place doesn't mean that's our final destination. And sometimes many of us become satisfied with layover blessings and we miss our final destination. Let me see if I can illustrate it. Church, oftentimes I have the blessed privilege to travel. And when I'm leaving from Little Rock, there's no straight through flights. And I always have to stop in Chicago, Charlotte, Dallas, or Atlanta. And you know when I stop in Atlanta, it's a nice airport. You can shop in Atlanta's airport. Good restaurants. But no matter how attractive the airport is, no matter how wonderful the amenities may be, I can never become too comfortable in the airport because I know Atlanta is just my layover. Little Rock is my final destination. All I came to tell somebody is don't become satisfied with where you are and you have to be careful of celebrating at the wrong mountain. Uh, you, you, you remember Jesus took Peter, James, and John. They're on the Mount of Transfiguration. God shows up in power and glory. They see a side of God that they've never seen before, Joe. Never seen before. And they so happy. One of the disciples says, God is good for us to stay here. Says, matter of fact, let's build three tabernacles. One for Moses. One for Elijah. One for you. Let's just stay here on this mountain. The Mount of Transfiguration. God, we've seen you in a way that we've never seen you before. And God had to tell them, no, no. We can't stay on this mountain because the work is in the valley. Don't miss your shout. If Jesus would have stayed on that mountain, he would have missed his appointment on Mount Calvary. And if Jesus would have stayed on that mountain, mountain and if he would have missed his appointment at Mount Calvary he would have never died and if he would have never died he would have never got up on the third day and if he would have stayed at that mountain and never got up on the third day he would have never rolled with all power in his hand and if he would have never rolled with all power in his hand we wouldn't be in Brown Baptist singing it's mighty nice to be on the Lord's side look in somebody's direction and say neighbor don't celebrate on the wrong mountain Paul says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Jesus Christ. Press. Don't you celebrate on the wrong mountain. But finally, you have to live on God's promise. Verse 8. See, I've set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give to them and to their offspring after them. Listen, Moses is praying that these people finally get it. He says, you've been in the wilderness too long. I want you to make it to a preferred place. I, I want you to make it to a promised place. He said, see, I've set the land before you. He says, I've promised it to you. This is the word. Just because God has promised you some things doesn't mean that it's not going to require 
holy perspiration and godly determination. I, I, I want to talk to somebody here today. Stop believing that you're just going to bump into all of God's blessings. That, that there are some times that God calls you and I to partner with God to reach our preferred place. He says, see, I've sealed it. He says, listen, you still have to go to the land of the Amorites, to Euph uh, Euphrates. He says, you have to go to the high land and the low land. He says, it's yours, but you can't be afraid to fight for it. That's a word for somebody. Fight for it. I, go, go to school and burn the midnight all fight for it. You, you want God to bless you with the spouse. Get your hair done. Get your nails done. Get your credit score up and fight for it. Listen. He, he said, I've sealed it and I'm done today. I, I've sealed it. He says the promise, it, it, it's a picture in the original language. It's a it's a picture almost in our contemporary language of a promise note that's in a white crisp envelope that's right within our reach. But because of delay and because of disobedience, the envelope is no longer crisp and white, but it's soiled and dirty. Isn't that us? Many times God has our certificate of occupancy. God has our title to our blessings. But because of delay, because of disobedience, the once envelope that was crisp white is filled with dust. But I got good news to you. Good for you. This is the word. Just because the envelope is dirty. The promise is still good. That's all I came to tell somebody. I, I know we've all done some things that we shouldn't have done, but the good news is God's promise is still good. And aren't you glad that God is not some shady businessman that's trying to take blessings from you? Some of us, we got our blessings on wheel call and God is just waiting for you to claim your blessing and go to the next level. Get your blessing out of reserve. Take your blessing out of waiting and say, God, God, I'm ready to go to the next level. Let me see if I can illustrate it. I can recall, matter of fact, a time when I was living here in the Mid-South area in Memphis. I had deboarded my plane, anxious to go home. Ran down the baggage claim to retrieve my luggage. I didn't see my luggage. I began to panic, y'all because my two good black suits was in that luggage. Didn't see it on the conveyor belt. I looked and I looked, no luggage. People picked up their bags, still no luggage. Finally, I began to search around and I looked in the baggage office and there I saw my bag was in the luggage office. I beamed with pride. I wanted to hurriedly get home to get to Sister Parks and the kids. I went in to grab my bag. But the flight, att the, but the flight attendant or the desk agent said, wait a minute, sir. What are you doing? I said, I'm grabbing my bag. She said, sir, I don't know if that's your bag or not. I said, what do you mean? I know what's in that bag. Two black suits, three white shirts, three ties, a pair of black shoes. She said, sir, I, I know that's all good and well, but I can't verify that's your bag. She said, sir, do you have a claim ticket? I said, matter of fact, I do. Reached down in my jacket and gave her my claim ticket. And she said, here you go, sir, it's your bag. That's all I came to tell somebody, Brown, when the enemy is on your trail, don't be afraid to show the enemy your claim ticket. I, I know you got enemies all around you. But show the enemy your claim ticket. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard. Have I got a witness? 
I know the enemy wants your marriage, but show the enemy your claim ticket. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. And I, I know the doctor has written you off, but show the enemy your claim ticket. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Have I got a witness here? Is there anybody here that can say I'm holding on to the promises of God? I may not know what tomorrow looks like, and, but I know who holds my tomorrow. Look in somebody's direction and say, neighbor, I know the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb but I started out a long time ago and there is no doubt in my mind look in somebody and say enough is enough it's time to go further it's time to go where natural feet will walk it's time to think what the natural mind won't think it's time to speak what the natural tongue won't speak I'm out of here y'all but I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages let his praises ring glory I will shout and sing I'm standing on the promises of God I got to get out of here Brown turn oh, turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I know you might be in the wilderness but tell them be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord and somebody can testify the wilderness gets a little lonely the wilderness gets a little scary the wilderness will make you drink tears for water but tell them neighbor I serve a God that can take care of you in the wilderness it won't always be like this because one Friday my Savior he died didn't he die but that's not how the story is early Sunday morning he got up with all power Oh, all power in his hand. I got one more thing to tell you. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides you, God will take care of you. Is there anybody here that can lift up your hands and say, God will walk with me. God will talk with me. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Shout it out. Shout it Oh, yeah. Enough is enough. Don't settle to survive. Maybe you're making it, but you know that you're not at the place where you should be with God. Maybe you become maladjusted to wilderness living. 
listen, God brought you here to Brown because you're so close to the promised land. And he said, all you have to do is claim it. Let's pray together. Hey, we trust that that word and worship was just for you. This is the big question. What's the next steps? Hey, if you are unsaved, never confess your hope in Jesus Christ or unchurched. Hey, and you feel God moving on your heart. Hey, we open our arms up to you. You can connect and join this ministry by simply texting NHBC join. In HBC Join to 501-737-4040. I promise you someone will call you, connect with you, and share with you the next steps. Listen, you've been blessed by this word. You have eaten from the Lord's table. We want to invite you to sow seed. This is good ground for you to sow seed in, to can give and support the work and mission of this church. There are several ways for you to give. You see those opportunities. Let's continue to move this ministry forward and we can do that with your partnership. Finally, we ask that you stay connected. Connect with us on Facebook, IG. Also download our church's mobile app, All Things New Hope. Text New Hope BCAR, New Hope BCAR in your mobile app store, and you can download our app. All Things New Hope is right there at your fingertips. Listen, we are praying for you, and we ask that you pray for us. Remember that the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich and addeth no sorrow. Be blessed. Reaching the promises of God will call for some stretching of your faith, reaching for extending yourself past comfort levels. Join the New Hope family in person and online as we journey through the life of Abraham to uncover moments of intense reaching that led to the manifestation of the promises of God. Good news, New Hope family. We have a new app that makes staying connected much easier. New Hope Baptist Church brings all things New Hope to the tip of your thumbs. You can access live and recorded sermons, set up a reoccurring gift, and receive updates on all our activities. Text New Hope BC app to 77977 to download the app today, or visit the App Store on your mobile device and search New Hope Family AR. New Hope, we invite you to get connected and stay connected to one of our many social platforms. We invite you to get connected on Twitter and keep up with the latest happenings at New Hope. Become our friend on Facebook and see what we've been doing in our community. Watch us on YouTube where you can hear clips and sermons from Pastor Parks. New Hope Social Media. Building faith, sharing love.